Greetings, David Avocado Wolf here. Welcome. I've got some great guests on today and they're some of my best friends and we've been traveling the world together recently. They are connoisseurs of health. And they uh, approach it from all the things that we love. Of course, the spring water and the healthy water and the pure water and the great foods. And of course, you know, living close to the earth and being barefoot on the earth and all those things that make us healthy. But there's something that we overlook. It's something so immediate. It's so around us, hint, hint, that we don't pay attention to it very often. Yet it might be one of the most important things for our health, our longevity, and our well-being. So with no further ado, I want to bring on Lydia and Arturo of geophilia.org. Welcome. Thank you so much, David. Such an honor to be here. Thank you so okay, much, David. So, yeah, it's, it's thanks, amazing Arturo. to be sharing. Lydia's Greek and Arturo's Mexican. So these two get along with me really good. I love them so much. <laughs> And, uh, and they are always up for an adventure to a sacred site and a temple. And that's one of the things that just turns me on. O over the years, every place I've traveled, if I was doing an event in St. Louis, okay, let's go to Cahokia Mounds. If I'm doing an event in New Jersey, let's go to Tripod Rock. I mean, it was just always something I was into. And then I found out there are other people like me. And these these two are actually experts. It's what they do for their for their life. They're doing a, a an amazing um, seminar. It's going to be coming up here in a, in a month or so. And we'll give you the details on that later, but let's get into it. So for our health, let's talk about space and location and how important that is for our health. I want to give some people the, the basics of what to look for and think about. Yeah. So first of all, I, I want to thank you for all the work that you've done from your side, you know, super food, spring water. We've learned so much from you. We've applied so much. So that has been the best ever. And so, yeah, um, people sometimes might think that immunity, great immunity, you know, you did an immunity summit some time ago, sharing the best tips ever. But Great health and immunity is, of course, is our nutrition and it's also uh, our water and many other things. And it's also relationships and, you know, but the environment we live in, it's something that sometimes people, they don't have like the clarity in how it affects us. And that's what both me and Arturo, we have been doing over 20 years now and uh, decoding that. And I want to share a little story first, which is, Many years ago, I got very sick when I moved to a newly built apartment. And I will put an emphasis on that. I wanted a newly built apartment because I didn't want somebody else's energy. I, I have been always extremely sensitive with my environment, which, you know, makes me sometimes very intuitive about environments, but I also sometimes get greatly affected. And what happened to in this place was that everything was just freshly finished and so the paint of gases and the the plywood things and everything was just of gassing for people that don't know when something is newly built and it's built with synthetic materials especially the first few weeks and the first half year it's where the most of gassing comes so i found myself getting there and i was getting actually my health was declining more and more eventually i got uh, diagnosed with autoimmunity and then I just couldn't digest anything. I was really looking for answers everywhere and that's kind of where you came in and then I started you know integrating medicinal mushrooms and many other things which were part of the equation but if you only do that and then the environment keeps on pumping all this toxicity on your body, how much can the body take? You know, you have to be in a kind of a daily detox to, to get rid of all these things. And there was other factors as well. Another one was that after some months, I couldn't sleep in my bed anymore. I ended up sleeping in the floor of the second bedroom I had, which was very small, which was my meditation room. And I slept better there than in my own bed. What was that is that, first of all, the location of my bed was over underground water. That ended me, you know, doing a whole PhD about location and the effect on our health and why temples were placed in specific locations. And at that time, that triggered me to go to that direction. And so that was a huge issue, um, which is called geophysical anomalies, and we'll break that down in a bit. But to, to just continue with the story, then my mattress had metal in it. And so that was creating like, like a really taking all the electricity of the room. And I later I did body voltage measurements on myself 
on the bed and off. And when I was lying on the bed, I had like 10 times more body voltage. Your body voltage when you're on your bed has to be close to zero, almost zero. And so there were so many factors in there. Uh, and also there are things about layouts and geometry, and we'll get into that in a bit. But just to, to finish this story, um, I realized that there were all these different factors around me that were really contributing to my health decline and I was desperate. So what I did is that I was uh, remedying one after the other, one after the other. Of course, I remedied my inner world, you know, with amazing superfoods and supplements and best water, because at that time, I remember I was drinking tap water with a filter and I couldn't drink it anymore. I didn't know why until I got to your one of your seminars. So I was just drinking from the tap and I, I didn't want to drink it anymore. So I was getting dehydrated. So it was a series of things. And then I remedied the bed. I remedied the EMF. I remedied the, the different off-gassing. I, I got, you know, air filtration things. And over some time, I finally started to see results in my health. And that was a very challenging story of my life that eventually led me to, you know, going deeper in what healing architecture is and actually meeting Arturo and creating Geophilia together. Yeah. And so what happens when you're in an environment that is pretty toxic and many people, we have seen it, they go with the best intention. They buy a new place, a new house, or sometimes these tiny houses and they're completely toxic. So they're, they're, they're doing, they don't know, but they're doing, uh, you know, like a harm to themselves without knowing. So the first important thing for what Lydia is sharing is the location. Where you will locate your bedroom or your house plays a major role. It's really, really important. Of course, sometimes we cannot change it. So, okay, I cannot change my bedroom. I cannot change my house. What do I do? We have some solutions. There are some uh, uh, scientific laboratory tested solutions. It's not only, you know, like crazy ideas that one day a guy woke up and say this thing works. They actually have tested it very efficiently. And so, yeah, as Artur is saying, the first and foremost, you know, about your space is basically the area that you sleep in because we spend most of us at least, you know, eight hours a day seven days a week, 365 days a year in a bed. And so the energy of that bed and the electromagnetism of that bed needs to be uh, in a harmonious way, the best for our body. That means that your bed needs to be away from what we call a geophysical anomaly. That would be a place, and this is all what I did in my PhD, it's a place where the magnetic field of the earth actually the value of the field either rises significantly or drops significantly. And that big shift happens usually when we have uh, an underground water body or a, a fault line or another kind of discontinuity is called. Basically, in simple words, you have different kinds of subsoil that meet. So you have different conductivity on one side and different conductivity on the other side. And that can be measured to have like several times of a geophysical magnetic anomaly. So that will actually uh, increase the magnetic anomaly. So what happens is when we sleep over that, the body cannot shut down to regenerate and rejuvenate. And so our immune system goes down and that goes for any kind of stress. So we don't want stress, any kind of stress in the bedroom because we need to be able to shut down. And of course, magnetism and electromagnetism and location is one and as arturo said okay if we're if we have the land we do a special analysis and we know hey don't build here build there we will find the best place but for those of you that have for example uh, an apartment and you don't have a second choice uh, you know to sleep in the floor of your meditation room there are solutions for that but other stressors in the bedroom for example can also be 
uh, blue light and uh, specifically also uh, these very efficient lights that have mercury in them, they're flickering, there are all kinds of problems there. So you can just go to incandescent or, you know, full spectrum lights or kind of reddish lights. But the bedroom is the one of the most important places to uh, make sure you have a good location. And then the secondary would be if you have an office space, you know, then you spend again, many hours. So wherever you spend many hours consistently is where your body will get mostly affected from the location. So what happens in the location that you are, let's imagine like Lydia, she was sleeping over a fold, over underground water. So all this excess of energy, excess of electromagnetic energy was going and was amplified by her mattress. The mattress was made of metal, like a mesh, like a, you know, like right, a grid. With the springs in it. The with metal the springs, springs in it. And what happens is that this metal uh, grid will amplify this electromagnetic field. And then imagine it's like you're plugged into a um, washing machine, you know, like it's all day, all night emitting mm -hmm. these frequencies. So of course you cannot relax. So your body is in a constant stress. So you cannot relax, you cannot have good sleep. And then if you add that, and that's the, the third parameter, there is something called a Faraday cage. And basically, almost in all cities, we live in buildings and, you know, like houses that are made as a box made of metal. This is called Faraday cage. And a Faraday cage, imagine like all the steel inside the concrete, creates... Um, an environment, a condition that will amplify all the electromagnetic fields, the artificial, that, the artificial also, electromagnetic exactly. fields that are inside the room. So if you're there with your mobile phone on in 4G, 5G, whatever, and maybe you have a Wi-Fi antenna inside, all these electrosmog will be amplified and will be echoing inside this room. So people go there and it's like, I cannot sleep. Why I cannot sleep? Because of this excess of electrosmog. So what Lydia was saying is the one of the easiest things to do is turn off your Wi-Fi at night. At night. That's Please, it. guys, turn like, it off. Turn it off. And the your same. phone, of course, too, right? Everything. Just like turn the, that the off phone, as well. The phone, the phone is outside your bedroom, like always. And you turn off Wi-Fi at night if you're not, you're, you're not using it. And then other very important thing that we've been, I've been for more than 20 years devoted my life to sacred geometry and fractal geometry. I discovered through many trial and error and measuring the heart brain harmonics with different tools that actually using fractal geometry or sacred geometry forms can have a positive impact in the way our electromagnetic body and our gravitational body interact with our cellular biological body, our chemical body. So when you create these environments where you have fractal geometry surrounding you and you have this high level of fractal geometry surrounding you, the environment will be more coherent. Yeah, it's the same way that, for example, uh, you can do vortrapping trapping in your water and you create more structured water. What the sacred geometry will do in many different ways, it, it will structure the energy of the space. It will create space coherence or space harmonics, as we call it. So we'll have a more coherent space. So that's, of course, really important. And there are many ways to incorporate that. Of course, if you are doing a new design, you know, we can help. We do all these sacred geometry designs. So it's embedded since the beginning. But for those of you that already have spaces, you can do, of course, we do the, the grids under the finished floor. So if you, you want to do a remodel, you can do that. Or you can just add sacred geometry art in your space. And you can add different, like smaller objects that can enhance the energy of the space. And there are many that can do that. Um, another important subject that I want to touch base that also comes from my story of before is materials. And so we have this industrial revolution that, of course, uh, you know, David has been an advocate of, you know, taking all the chemicals off our food. But the same goes for our, our buildings, because now our buildings have so much chemicals in them and we end up breathing that all day. Most people, as an average, spend like 
80 to 90 percent of their time daily inside a building space and so that has an immense effect on the air quality and the air we breathe an example for that that most people won't know about is something called vocs so that's a volatile organic compounds that is a known proven car carcinogen that exists mostly in all paints. So a, a great thing to do is use low VOC or no VOC. That's what we do. We use zero VOC in, in all the projects we do in our own homes. Um, in, in this place, I had to take, you know, a paint that actually has even orange peel oil and things like that. And immediately after I repainted the space, you know, all the energy of the space changed just because of the finish, the last layer of the wall was something different. And not, not only that, like the same way David has explained many times that he fills up, you know, like with rock powder, crystal powder, like, the, you know, the fields and, and his farms. We do the same. Exactly. <laughs> in, with the paint. We take all this, we mix it with the paint, and then you paint your house full of crystal powder, obsidian powder, high piezoelectric, dielectric materials. We have a, diff a specific powder, which we call fractal dust that we use as an extra. So, you know, whatever you do with your food, you know, you need to do with your environment. It's the same thing because you take it in all day long, physically and energetically. Let's talk about shape for a second, because, you know, when we go to like a sacred monument, we'll see that when you look at the the pattern, you'll see that it's like 12 columns this way and like five across, you know, it's something where if you put those numbers together, and I don't know if that's the exact right thing, but it's something like that where, you know, it'll be pi, it'll be phi. So the ancients knew that, the ancient Greeks knew that, the, the Egyptians knew that. Is there anything like that that we can do inside our homes, right? Is there any way to really take the box that we're given, let's say it's an apartment, and, and remediate it in other ways? I mean, I use Organite. Here's my favorite Organite in the house right here. That's that piece right there. This is an Organite highly fractalized object. And you have Organite right there. Let's, let's see that, Lydia. So you've got an Organite pyramid and these That's things 15 are 15 years old <laughs> now. They're really fun. Also irregular shape. So, you know, in this house, I'm not in a box. And so the energy in this room is really good. This is actually a really good room to record music in. And that's something I tell people about the shape of their, their living spaces. It should be acoustically friendly. And yes. that's kind of symbol, right? Or tell, tell us yes. more about that. Yeah, the question is really, really good. And what we have seen is that one of the best proportions to use like in all scales in all levels is a proportion that's called phi ratio phi not pi pi but phi phi has a proportion that is 1.618 it's an irrational number but just to to have the idea so 1.618 means that whatever your the length of your room is you will multiply or divide by 1.618 so that will give you let's have an idea yeah you have a, um, a room that is 10 meters. So you divide it by 1.618, you will have 6.18 meters, a cut where there you can place something. You can place your dining table. You can place, you can arrange the environment based on the phi ratio. And it doesn't matter. I mean, in, in practical meters, terms. Right? Using the metric distance system, because that's based on the, Earth's system, it right? It does, doesn't matter. You can use you can use uh, feet. You can use meter. It's just the proportion of the whole space. If we go, let's say, we're designing a house from scratch, we will use more sophisticated tools, and you know, it has to do with very complex ideas of the unified physics, etc. But just to make it very simple, if you arrange in a phi ratio grid your space and you arrange any object that is in that space, it can be vertical or it can be horizontal, you will have a more balanced space. Yeah. Okay. And, I and like I, that. Everything in its appropriate place based on the phi ratio, which is exactly. like the Fibonacci sequence, right? That's one, the Fibonacci sequence. 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 59, 89, 55, 89, 144, 237, it spirals out like that, right? 
That's it. Uh, you begin with with zero, with the nothingness, and one, the, the, the totality. So zero plus one, one, and then you start one plus one, two, two plus one, three, five, eight, etc. Yes. The, the golden ratio and the golden mean, which, you know, Arturo also has been teaching for over 20 years, is something that is really important because it's highly fractal and it's highly shareable. But we were having this discussion also in the Congress with Dan Winter, and it's really important to understand because people ask us sometimes, what is the best geometry of for everything? And we would say from our side depends on the energy of the space you want to create. So, for example, if you want a space that you want your privacy, you know, and you don't want to share information, then you don't go to the golden mean. Maybe you go to a hexagon or that direction, you know, and there are different sacred geometry uh, proportions. You also, also mentioned pi and there is Euler and there are a few others. And it depends what we are creating and for who we are creating. So, you know, we also do what something called the client analysis, which, uh, you know, you, you will have a little bit of an experience with five element charts. So what colors are good for you? What geometries are good for you? So it's also very customized on every person. Uh, now, what I wanted to mention, because you, you mentioned something so important, which is acoustics. And in ancient temples, um, of course, many times golden ration was used. Why? Because they wanted to amplify and share, first of all, the energy of the earth that was always in these anomalies. So that created like a power source for the temple. Uh, this is exactly what the pyramids of Giza are, for example, and many other temples around the world. But also they wanted to share all the information that was going in there in the energy level to be amplified and shared. So golden mean is, is perfect for that. But the point is that the acoustics, in my opinion, and all the research that I've done with the temples were not just to create like a perfect sound. Of course, they were using instruments on their voices. But the thing is, when you can create a ac perfect acoustic resonance or what is called like the sweet spot in the space, that also creates energetic resonance. So you create a perfect distribution of the energy waves in the space, which we call in geophilia the space harmonics. Now, I just want to add to that because we also get that question a lot from people. Should I design my home like a temple? You know, I've been uh, researching temples over 15 years, you know, analyzing their technology and recreating them for modern temples. But a temple is created for many reasons. I've, you know, I've been decoding the functions of, with real scientific backup. And I can say for sure, energy generation, healing, and uh, having altered states of consciousness, as well as seed growth um, enhancement. But if you create such a powerful place, then there is also the concept of hormesis. And that's a very intense field to be 24 seven. I think for maybe beings that are more advanced and you know they can take that charge every day, it's fine. But I think for the most of us, a home needs to have, of course, harmonics and balance and, and golden mean maybe or some other proportions, but not too much of a temple design because it will end up being extremely intense. And that over a long term, you know, can create issues because a temple was meant to be, um, you know, visited over a short period of time. It was a pilgrimage. You went there for healing, to receive guidance, to enter that field of coherence have altar states, have an awakening or an initiation. But, you know, imagine a space that gives you that all day long from morning to night. I mean, I, I don't think high, I could, High voltage. High voltage, exactly. I don't think I could take it as much as I love being in a temple space. Most Mostly like everything else is just nothing compared to temples. But then you feel the difference. You get out of your house and you go to the temple and then it's that other feel. Excellent. Okay. Now I just want to take a moment to digress. And we're going to talk about a Congress you guys have coming up and I'm going to be speaking at that Congress and all kinds of interesting speakers. So we'll, we'll put up the information and show you, show the website and you guys have a great website, geophilia.org. And I love that you guys travel to these sites and have traveled these to these sites for well over a decade, basically two decades of study in this field. What an amazing field that it is. So that's the site. You can see it's geophilia using the phi as the, yes. right? That's very clever. 
Um, and there's that third international Congress, and it's going to be November 16th and 17th, 2024. So if you want to get deeper for your own space and your own living arrangement and learning exactly what it's all about, this is where you want to go. And it's going to be an awesome event. I'm very excited about it. You can see all the things you'll learn there. Look at how many amazing things there biohacking, unified physics, healthy construction, ancient temples, conscious communities. And you guys are knee deep in all, or you're neck deep in all that stuff. And that's how we we became friends. It's just, you love the alternative communities. Like, look at that space right there. Just roll back up there. You see how that space brings the energy in completely differently than our normal box apartment. This is the type of spatial arrangements that we're going to be discussing in this call and also how to take your box apartment and just make it more harmonious, which we've been covering already even on this call. And so it's going to be a really cool event. Uh, I think the dates are where November 16th and 17th and 18th. Is that right? All three days? 16 and 17 is the weekend. Yeah, weekend oh, it's event the weekend. From, okay. from 10 to 6 U.S. time central. And of course, there will be a recording if you cannot make it to all of it live. And there are many different experts, you know, we have uh, Dorea Karim from Biogeometry, uh, we have different people, Unified Physics, we have Dr. Karatkov, we have Veda Austin. Oh, I love Dr. Dr. Karatkov. Hold on, just hold up on Dr. Karatkov and, and Veda Austin and Dan Witcher's right there. I've known um, Karatkov, him and I spent an entire day together one time by just by chance. You know, I ended up going to back to his Airbnb and we just talked all night. This guy is from the old Soviet Union. He's one of the most amazing scientists I've ever met and one of the most open beings to the truth I've ever encountered. Yes. So real Absolutely. special. I, Absolutely. I would I, I would come to the event just for him, just for Karatkov. That's how I feel about him. He's awesome. Veda Austin, similar. I got to meet her through my cousin and wow, she is a water specialist. She has discovered amazing things about water. She's changed the nature of the game. Dan Winter, years ago, we did an event together in Australia. Yes. Yeah. I, I've, ever since I've always got his, his super imploders. You guys now sell his super imploder, I think on your Geophilia site. No, Highly recommend do. that. It's an awesome device. What an amazing guy. It, I love that he's been able to take his knowledge and put it into useful things that you can use, like his water imploder, which I highly recommend. So those three right there are worth it. They're such amazing beings. And plus, oh my God, look at this guy on the left. Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so David, you're going to give an epic <laughs> download on next level farming. And I would come to this just for that session. Absolutely. And then we have also people talking about conscious community creation, permaculture, you know, and uh, other type of technologies that Paul, Paul, he's an alchemist, and he's going to talk yes. about incredible plasma technology. Well, so Paul is an amazing, go back to Paul there for a second. I haven't seen him in many years, an old friend of mine lovely human being that guy is a real dedicated alchemist and he's got really amazing things to teach i cannot wait to get the download from paul harris that guy's one of the best alchemists i've ever encountered in the world and that's saying something because i've been on the road for 30 years i've met a lot of interesting people a lot of incredible alchemists paul is right up there at the top he's one of the greatest in the world so that's exciting you guys got him and please tell him i said hello i i love him he's awesome we will we will <laughs> Absolutely. And then you see John and Rebecca Bush going to be so cool. We're going to have a great time and, uh, and you can join online, right? It's going to be, yes. everyone's going to be beamed in. So you can join us from anywhere in the world on this. Okay. So you join the Congress, you'll see the site there, right there, geophilia.org. And then you want to click the international Congress and, uh, and join us there. It's going to be really. And also you have uh for your audience, David, we're offering with the code WOLF, you can get 55% off. So that's Ooh. just code WOLF. Okay, W-O-L-F-E. Make sure it's spelt right. So it's W-O-L-F-E. Exactly. And um, you can get 55% off. That's a deal. Thanks for being generous on that, you guys. Appreciate that. Okay, so that's that. We'll throw the details in the notes below. So check those out and uh, and be in the Congress. If you want more detail on this, it's really important. I mean, we're wrapped around these forms all the time and they affect us deeply. You can see my space back there is designed for me. You can see my yoga swing back there. You can see I've got a like a med bed thing right there. My sauna's over here. I've got all kinds of things in this room that inspire me, that keep the energy going. The plants are just starting to come in for the winter. So that whole side will be all plants through the winter. And so that I feel comfortable and I feel good in my space. That's how you want to be. That's how you want to live your life. Right? Right, you guys? 
Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful space. You have all yeah. natural materials, wood, stone. And we're orchid. just actually working on your Greece space. You know, we're doing some rearrangements there that have been changing a lot that energy. So hopefully Excellent. you'll see it very soon. <laughs> I hope to see that very soon. And I hope to see you both very soon. I, I think it will be definitely within about a month or so. And we'll, of course, be together, by the way, for everyone who is an Anarchapulco fan or you want to come down to Mexico or check out Mexico for as a living possibility in the future, we will be together in Anarchapulco in February. And it's around February 14th, 15th, 16th. You can check that site out. And uh, these guys will do an amazing presentation there. And then we'll all be together. So if you want to hang yes. out with us, it's it's Come hang out. It's really cool. It's, it's not, there's not too many people. Maybe there's 400 people max at the whole event, maybe 500. And, uh, and so that way you can get real close with us and hang out. I'll be there with my whole entourage and uh, that will be just a wonderful time. And these two will be there with their whole team and we are going to knock it out of the park, but this geophilia conference is coming up quick. So if you can join us, please join us. Um, thanks so much for sharing you guys and great to see both of you. You look radiant and healthy. It's wonderful to see. Thank you so Thank much, you so David. Much. Thank you so much, David. All right, you guys. All right, everyone. Have the best day ever. We'll see you soon. Cheers.